Hello everyone, so today we're back with another video, this is the third part in our series about ultracapacitors, and today we're going to be talking about the hybrid capacitor. So this one is one that I find really interesting, and uh, I think you guys are really going to like it too. If you watched our previous videos on the pseudo capacitor and the EDLC, um, I'll link both of those in the description if you haven't taken a look already, but uh, here is the hybrid capacitor. So essentially, what is the hybrid capacitor? Well, I bet you can already sort of tell from the name. Well, what is a hybrid? If you think about a hybrid car, maybe it's a combination between an SUV and a sedan, for example. Um, a hybrid capacitor, in that case, would be a combination of an EDLC and a pseudo capacitor. So for this reason, it's advantageous in both respects. So any of the advantages that we talked about in the EDLC um, may also apply to the pseudo capacitor, or, sorry, rather, may also apply to the hybrid capacitor and the advantages of the pseudo capacitor can apply to the hybrid capacitor. Basically, they're both used. And, um, and you may be confused, you may be like, how can we have an EDLC and a pseudo capacitor at the same time I thought one charges faradaically and one charges non-faradaically, or one charges electrochemically and one charges uh, electrostatically. Well, here's what it does. We have one type of hybrid capacitor, uh, and this one is fairly common. It's called the composite. It's not the most common type, but this is one type. The composite hybrid capacitor it has two electrodes, and there's some kind of electrolyte layer. And so this is positive, negative, right? But normally, like, let's say this was an EDLC, this would be some sort of activated carbon, you know. Um, and this would be another active carbon if it were EDLC. Likewise, if it were a pseudocapacitor, maybe it would be ruthenium oxide or something for the, uh, in order to do those electrochemical processes. In this case, instead of being an activated carbon or a, um, instead of just being an activated carbon or being ruthenium oxide or something, uh, this time we have a composite of both. So this material, if you were to blow it up here, you would see inside it, it's got these tubes. Maybe some of them are gonna be carbon, some of them are gonna be ruthenium oxide. Basically, it's going to have an EDLC and a pseudocapacitor electrode. So it's going to be sort of a mesh lattice layer that has both of them. And this is pretty advantageous. So basically, you can actually achieve a higher capacitance with this composite hybrid capacitor than any other type of pseudocapacitor or EDLC. I know, it's crazy, right? all of that capacitance just from combining the two of them together. And the reason is because um, if you watched our previous videos, we talked about the downsides of the EDLC. What disadvantages does it have? What advantages does the pseudocapacitor have? And what disadvantages does it have? Basically by creating this composite, we're able to get the advantages of both while limiting the disadvantages uh, of the other. So for instance, let's say ruthenium oxide, right? Very expensive. Um, but we still wanna use it because it's advantageous. Maybe we do some sort of combination between the activated carbon and the ruthenium oxide so that we can lower the price yet still get some of those high efficiencies. So you may say, okay, well, is this charging electrostatically or electrochemically? And the answer is both. It's both electrochemical and electrostatic um, at the same time. It's pretty, it's pretty cool, uh, but anyway, if we were gonna take a look at this again, um, there are other types than just the composite. The composite is not the only type of hybrid capacitor. Uh, it's actually not even the most common one. The, by far the most common one is the asymmetric. And you probably can already sort of um, guess what this is. I don't even know if I spelled that right. Doesn't matter. Asymmetric, pretty self-explanatory. One's gonna be EDLC, and one's gonna be pseudo. 
So this one's pretty cool. One's charging electrostatically, one's charging electrochemically. Um, you'll save price on those expensive pseudocapacitor materials. Uh, and usually, I believe the EDLC is commonly used as the cathode to make it or, more advantageous. Um, and that's because there's just certain advantages that are applied with a cathode that's an EDLC versus an anode that would be a pseudocapacitor um, that you may not get if let's say the EDLC was the anode and the pseudo was the cathode. Um, it just deals with the way the electron flow works. And you may wanna look more into that if you're really trying to uh, get a deep dive into asymmetric capacitors, um, hybrid capacitors. And uh, there is one more type, and this one's pretty good. Um, it, it does uh, limit some of the disadvantages of the composite, by the way, the asymmetric. Um, so that's maybe something you would wanna look into if you're trying to decide between the asymmetric or the composite uh, hybrid capacitor. There is uh, another type though, and this is the battery type. This one's pretty cool. Um, this one's really cool actually. But basically, this one, it has an EDLC, okay? And it has a battery electrode, right? Okay, think about it. The power density of the EDLC combined with the energy density of the battery electrode. Consider it for a minute. What advantages may this have? Oh, I know. High energy density. <laughs> Hold on a sec. High energy density. Yes. So you're going to get, you know how we were talking about in our first video with the EDLC, we were talking about what is the issue with using capacitors? Why don't these power our electric cars? Why aren't we using this to power our phones? The issue is the energy density is low, but the power density is high. So what middle ground can we come between? And the answer is we could use one electrode as the battery and one electrode as the EDLC. And of course this battery is charging electrochemically and the EDLC would be electrostatic in this case. And this would be some sort of um, electrolyte membrane where uh, you know ions could pass through. There you would have the double layer here. Uh, sorry, those would be, those would not be positively charged. Those would be negatively charged ions. Uh, but yeah, you would have the EDLC and the battery electrode. And this is this is very high energy density. This is some of the highest you can get out of ultra capacitors. So um, really, if you're looking for that energy density, you're looking for that power, uh, high power, uh, but high energy replacement, maybe the battery type capacitor, uh, ultra capacitor, may be for you. So um, that's pretty much it when it comes to hybrid capacitors. They're really interesting. I think they've got a lot of potential as compared um, to the pseudocapacitors or the EDLCs. I mean, both the pseudocapacitors and EDLCs have advantages and disadvantages in their own respects. You know, the, the pseudocapacitor actually could even be more energy efficient, uh, especially with that ruthenium oxide one. It could be more efficient uh, than even the battery type hybrid capacitor. Uh, but overall, the point you need to take away in terms of hybrid capacitors, basically you get the boost of both worlds. You know, some people would say you don't, some people would say, hey, I want that high power density. You don't try to take that away by using a battery electrode or something. Uh, but in most cases, you're gonna get enough, you're gonna get enough power dens uh, density. It's definitely more than a battery, uh, but you are gonna have a little bit less energy. It's really all about, it's, it's a spectrum. You gotta think about it, it's a spectrum. What do you want? Do you want energy density or power density? And all the way on the power density side, you've got uh, EDLCs, right? And then you start moving along, you've got pseudo capacitors. Then right in the middle, you got hybrid, battery hybrid capacitors. And then you start moving into the lithium ion battery sphere, maybe even going down all the way to fuel cells, which are very energy dense, uh, but they don't have as much power. So it's really a spectrum. You gotta find that right balance. And um, you really have to consider what situation am I trying to design for? If you want something that needs to last a long time, you're probably not gonna use 
uh, one of these ultra capacitors. I mean, maybe the battery capacitor, maybe a ruthenium oxide pseudo capacitor. Usually not though. Um, and I'll probably be making some videos in the future about other types of energy storage devices other than capacitors. Um, but uh, currently I'm trying to work on uh, developing some types of capacitors uh, uh, using mathematical modeling. And uh, if I end up developing anything cool, I'll definitely let you guys know and I'll make a video about that, uh, talking about what I ended up doing and sort of what I found out regarding capacitors. So uh, thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to this video.